All right, guys. So thanks for being here for Painting Foolproof Sunsets. This is a super fun and easy lesson. Um, and this is really um, a good time for you to just sort of let go of any anxiety that you might have brewing within you right now. We're just going to play with color and spread it on the canvas. And I'm going to show you just, it's a really, really easy method that once you learn the steps of what we're doing today, you can pretty much apply to anything. It doesn't have to be a sunset. It could be um, pretty much anything. So nice and easy. Hi guys, welcome back. Um, so your first decision here is which way do you want your canvas to go? Do you want it to be a uh, portrait? This would be a portrait. Or do you want it to be a landscape? So which, which way do you want your painting to go? And you can give some thought to where you're going to maybe hang it. Um, maybe give it uh, some thought to that space. Maybe just choose which one you think looks better. It's up to you, artist choice, okay? Um, today, I think what I am going to do is portrait. But it doesn't matter for the lesson, you can just um, very much follow along with me with whichever direction your canvas is going. All right. Um, and the next thing we're going to do is pencil in our horizon line. And within landscape painting, the horizon line is kind of like the anchor of the painting. And really what that is, the horizon line is where, well, can you hear me, Marky? Is everybody hearing me okay? We're good? Okay, great. Um, the horizon line is where the water meets the air or where the land meets the air. It's where the below hits the air. So where below hits the above. So if we think of looking out into this, like we're standing here on the beach, this is our horizon line. So if you notice here on this canvas, it's not right in the middle. I knew the UPS man's coming a couple times today and you know, I don't know, we'll just hope for the best, guys. Um, the dogs. <sighs> um, okay. The, oh, hi, Sasha. <laughs> the, uh, so the horizon line is not right here in the middle. A lot of times our logical mind wants to be like, okay, let's put it right straight in the middle and let's get our ruler out and make sure it's super, super straight. And you don't have to do that. So I'm going to consciously just maybe go, you know, quarter of the way up and put my horizon line. Okay. And you can do that. Ooh, sorry guys. Just hit the computer. Um, you can do that with a pencil. You can do that with your paint. Uh, I'm just going to pencil it in right here. And I'm just going freehand. I mean, if it makes you feel better to use a ruler, go for it. But if you're in nature and you look out at the horizon line, so next time you go outside, just look out and see where does the air hit the hit the earth, hit um, you know the land, the water. Um, it's not it's not super flat and flat and straight like like a ruler, you know. So you don't have to be super perfect. All right, and then next we're going to brush in our sky. So your choice. You can start with the yellow, move up to orange, and move up to red. You can start with the red, move down to orange, down to yellow. I'm kind of feeling like I want to start with the yellow first. Uh, and with, the, with these colors, it's um, also a good idea sometimes to bring in a little bit of white. Because if you're feeling like you put some paint down and it's really um, harsh, you can just add a little bit of white and that's going to add some tone to it. So, Give yourself just like a little side of, instead of a side of ranch, give yourself a side of white paint, okay? Oh God, I have flowers in my hair for this lesson because we're pretending we're on the beach. <sighs> so even though we can't be on the beach at this very moment, we sure can paint it in, right? Just give a thought. 
You've got the land, you've got the air, you've got the sun, the breeze that you might feel. All right, and I'm going to use a pretty large brush using like this. And I'm just going to dip in my yellow and I'm going to paint above that horizon line. And I might even cross over and, uh, you know, go over the line and that's perfectly fine. Okay. So I'm going to do yellow probably to about here. And I'm going to have to do some orange to about here and then the rest will be red. So playing with our yellow here. Just brush it on and play with the color. That's really the key to this. And if you feel like using your fingers here, you can do that. You're basically painting air. You're painting sunbeams. They don't necessarily have direction, you know, so you don't have to go back and forth. You can get in there and do whatever feels right, but we're just spreading that color. And it's nice to intentionally take your time in these, um, these paintings, you know, you don't have to go super fast. As you're painting your yellow, give thought to um, the color of that sun and what that feels like right as it's rising or right as it's setting. You know, it's that, that warmth. Your mind might take you to uh, a vacation spot or a special spot that you know of on the beach. Yellow is also the color of your solar plexus chakra, and that's your, your core, the core of you. So, you know, when you're playing with yellow and painting yellow, this is a really good time to just, like, embrace yourself and, you know, what, what, what makes you unique and what makes you happy and what are you good at? What are your quirks? You know, what, um, how, what does your freak flag look like and, 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 and how, you know, just really be proud of yourself. That's what yellow is all about, connecting with yourself. And get the edges of your canvas. These edges here. Oh. It'll look nice when we're done and when you have um, when you have your sides done. It just like a nice little finishing touch. Now I mentioned white. I could bring some white in here. Can we see what happens? This changes the tone a little bit here and there. And that's a nice thing to do because, you know, we don't want this to look like a brick of, we don't want this to look like jello salad. That's what we don't want it to look like. We don't want it to look like a brick of the, uh, like lemon and then a, a brick of orange and then a brick of red. We want it to kind of merge together, right? We don't want to have it all because <laughs> uh, that's not what Mother Nature does when the sun's setting or the sun's rising. rising. They, they, all these colors kind of merge together and they have all these neat tones. Need a little bit more white. I like the way that white merged in with there, so I want to play around with that. nice as we're merging colors to add a little bit of white at that point where you're going to start merging. You see how I got a little bit of the orange down here and that's okay. I'm just going to leave it like that. I kind of like it. I'm going to dip into my orange here and start merging. So as my yellow is still a little bit wet, I am going to take advantage of that and, and pull some of this 
orange into that yellow and mix them while they're on the canvas, basically. And again, they don't have to be all super, super stacked. What happens if I come down here and I don't do it over there? That's okay. It doesn't have to be all perfect like that. I'm just going to leave it like that. And I should have said, as we are painting along here, I know you're all muted right now, but if you have questions, please unmute yourself and just speak up. Um, I know there is probably a chat room going and I will try to check that, but I can tell you as an artist, I'm not super great at um, doing that. I kind of go off into la la land a little bit. So um, speak up if you've got questions, okay guys? away for a minute so I didn't hear yeah you can yeah I'm just starting to add orange and so what we're going to be doing is um, going yellow up into orange up into red okay it doesn't have to look exactly like this because this was one second of a sunset five seconds later these these colors all look different so Sorry. you don't have to copy mine because we're all in different places so our, all, all our sunsets are going to look a little bit different thank you you're welcome. And I know we have some artists out there too. So if you don't need to follow me step by step, this is, you know, you go rogue. It's all good. Um, your root chakra or your um, sacral chakra is orange and that, that, that brings a lot of creativity. So think about that. We're sitting in creativity right now. So just enjoy that you guys. Good job for taking time to just stop and let your creative muscles flex. Let yourself try something new. Good job. Stepping into that creativity. Part of creativity too is stepping into that um, territory where you are okay with knowing you are creating because it's good medicine for us. You don't have to create a masterpiece every single time. One of my teachers told me one time that only one out of 10 paintings really kind of turns out to be something you may want to keep. And I, I, I would say that's probably the case for me. So it's okay. You know, if you don't like it when we're finished, it's okay. You can paint over it. You can turn it into something else. Like this Buddha. This Buddha, before he was a Buddha, he was a whole bunch of things that I didn't like. So at first he was um, like this lady with her mouth wide open singing. And then, and I stuck it in the bushes for a long time. And then I changed it to um, a bird's nest. And then I changed that to, what did I change it to? Something else I don't remember. And then it's now it's like, oh, I think he's probably gonna stay. You know, but that's a good example of, uh, so what if it doesn't turn out? It's going to turn out someday to be something, right? So the fact, I'm, I'm bringing this up because we're playing with orange, right? And that's creativity. So the fact that you're, you're being creative in this moment and the fact that you're welcoming this creativity into your life, that is literally making you happier and healthier. I'm taking some yellow here and dragging it into my orange. See how we kind of have this chunky line here. I add a little bit more yellow. Maybe use my fingertips to rub it in. I'm telling you, using your fingers is the best artist tip ever. 
I don't know why, but it's like when all the beauty happens, it's when you use your fingers. Whoop. All right, so I'm going to start with my red. And if you're not ready to start red yet, that's perfectly fine. You don't have to keep up with me. And again, remember your corners. And another thing to keep in mind, this is our background. So we really do not have to worry about detail in this moment at all. And that to me sometimes just feels like freedom. Just playing with color, just spreading it. Adding a little bit of white into my red. And again, this is artist's choice, so you do uh, the colors that feel right for you. Okay? You make them as bold as you'd like. Or as muted as you'd like. This is your sunset. As I paint the sunset, I think of Hawaii. into my red. And it's very subtle, but it's there. Okay. I think I want to put a little bit more red. This is the first time that I'm rinsing my brush. Um, and whether or not you've rinsed your brush at this point or not, it doesn't really matter. I'm only mentioning that because um, when you're painting like this and you're blending colors, you don't really have to rinse your brush so much because having paint on your brush is part of the blending process. So as you get comfortable with it, you'll realize that um, you know you can go through and put a nice blended background together and, and never rinse your brush once. But I did rinse my brush because I want to bring some yellow up in here. Because yellow kind of is the, well, it's the fire, right? It's the glow. So I just want a little bit more glow up here. I'm using my fingers. It just sort of takes that harshness away of that, that line, but it, it depends on your style because there's some really neat styles out there where you can have really sharp, bold, harsh lines and paint a sunset and it's really beautiful. So it, it's just the style, again, the artist's choice. So how's everybody doing on their backgrounds? You want to hold them up if you want. Oh, oh, pretty, 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 pretty. Loving it. Okay, I want candy corn now. Awesome. Okay. 
Okay, so you guys take your time. I'm going to go ahead and I am, hmm, can you guys hear me because my computer's telling me that my speaker's not working? Okay. My, my computer's um, probably in its last month of life, so it's starting to do some odd things. So send it some love. All right, I'm going to start on the water. So what you may want to think about is your brush because we want to make a pretty sharp line. If we're going to make any sharp lines in our background at this point, it's going to be now. So using um, like a straight edge, edge brush is helpful because this kind of brush is going to get you a nice uh, sharp line. And if you don't have this kind of angled brush, another great option could be either just a flat brush like this or a round brush, which I can't find at the moment. There we, oh, here we go. So something like uh, this even could give you a pretty nice um, straight line. But my favorite is this angled brush. So that's what I'm going to be using. So I'm going to figure out my blue color. So this is what you guys get to do at this stage too, is get your right brush and figure out what color do you want your water to be? So what I recommend is keeping a little bit of that white. We're going to use that. And then maybe bringing in two different shades of blue. And then we're going to kind of mix all that together in this section. So I think I'm going to pick, um, I've got this teal blue. Oh, that's not a great shot now there, is it? I've got this teal blue that was already mixed up. And then a darker blue and my white. So that's what I'm going to be working with. But what you should probably be giving thought to is what's in your what's in your head? What do you visualize when you look at a sunset? Can you think of a sunset? What does the water look like? The water may be like a turquoise green or it may be almost black. It just depends on where you are. Okay, so you make your own water, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Ooh, this is such a mermaid color. Look at this. Oh, can you see that yummy, yummy? Makes me think of the sharks, San Jose sharks. And we'll paint this water for them. All right, so I'm just going to take my the two blues and sort of mix them together on the um, on my palette. So this is what I'll be working with is just kind of painting these two blues in that space and adding again um, a little bit of white here and there if it feels right. Um, and here goes our straight line. So this is that line that we drew with our pencil um, or marking it in you know, whatever way you chose to mark it. I'm going to just kind of bump up against that at this point. Take that in. And again, making those sharp lines on the sides as well. Use my reach. All right, so we've got a pretty straight line there. This is your horizon. This is what the horizon looks like if you're standing on the beach, looking out into the ocean. So you see the water meets the air. And then the rest of this part, you don't have to be so careful. You can just get funky and just cover it with your blue color, okay? I'm going to change my brush because this brush makes me feel like I have to be too careful. I don't like that feeling. I'm going to just switch it up to a different, um, just a bigger brush because I've got this blue to fill in. So part of life, um, 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 
part of, sorry, oh, my stutter's coming back. Oh, that was weird. Um, part of my, uh, part of, oh, I'm having a hard time, sorry. Let me just look around. <clears throat> part of why I was saying this is a foolproof sunset lesson. It's, it's, this is like foolproof. Anything you do at sunrise or sunset, thinking wise, is pretty foolproof because the sun is low enough that everything else doesn't need a lot of um, direct reflective light placed into the painting. So um, you can paint your water however you want it and it's going to be okay because the sun is setting and you don't see all those different layers of depth at that time of day. hope that makes sense. That's kind of why it's foolproof because you don't have to really worry about um, shading so much. It's, it's a lot of just silhouette work and putting down color, basically. Okay, pulling a little bit of white in here. You see that gives it a little bit of depth. And you don't need to worry about your waves or anything like that yet, because that's going to be our next step. But first we want to get just our nice blue color down. This color makes me think of like Paho. I love this color blue. Any questions out there? Everybody's good? So I've done this class before uh, in person. I've taught it in Hawaii. Pretty cool. And I've also taught it in my garage. And in that lesson, both Raquel and Anthony were there. So they could be they, sh they could be student teachers today. I should have made you guys look at those paintings if you still have them. Show off. We could get them if you want. Yeah, go get them. Well, does everybody want to see what they painted in the uh, in-person lesson? I mean, yeah, yeah, they're saying, yeah, get them. Okay. And again, you know what I'm going to say at this point, right? What am I going to say? The edges. Let's see how this is looking so nice with those edges nice and done. And then it's like, oh, naked, naked, naked alert. Okay, right, so we want to make sure you pick up your canvas and put that blue down. Okay, show and tell. Raquel, look at that. That's Anthony's. That's Anthony's. I remember that. He did a nice close-up shot. Very good. And Raquel, what does yours look like? I have to grab mine. What okay. Anthony, you had a really nice background in that one. I like those colors. Thank you. Make sure you get these edges all nice and covered. This is going to be so pretty when we're done with this. You can hang with us, and this would be just a beautiful Remember, you Anything. had two, there was two oh, kids. Right. Yeah. The tree got real funky and weird, <laughs> but it's okay. No, I love it. It's a doctor's tree. It's very soothing. Yeah, I love it. And it looks like the doctor's, yeah, the Dr. Seuss tree. Very yeah. Dr. Seuss-y your tree. Yeah. Mm, I love it. Thanks. Thanks, guys. That was good sharing. And think about that. So every tree in nature is different. Every single tree can look very similar, but it's they're totally, you know, they look different. Um, every sunset is different. Every sunrise is different. Every leaf on a bush is different. So none of our paintings are going to be the same. None of our sunsets are going to be the same. None of our trees are going to be the same. 
And that is like the beauty of it all, really, because it just shows how individual everybody is. I have a little bit of cleaning up to do here on my side. So I'm going to take note and do that now while my paint is still wet. Sometimes I just like looking at my rinsed water. Like sometimes that just makes me happy. I don't know if you, oh, I'm going to spill it, but it's like that just made the most beautiful blue. And that might be all I need in this process is just to see that pretty blue color in my rinse water. <laughs> so it's not all about the end result. Right. So is everybody pretty close to being done with their backgrounds at this point? In no rush. Okay. Our next step, <clears throat> we're going to uh, bring in this, I think we're going to bring in the sand. I haven't done this, uh, this lesson in a bit. Let me just double check. Mm -hmm. Oh no, our wave water. I already said that. Yeah, we were going to put our waves in. So um, for the waves, all you have to do is just grab a little bit of white and a little tiny brush. And basically, to put the waves in, you kind of focus on the upper part of this blue. So if you were to kind of cut your, your blue in half, you want to put the waves in more of the upper part of it. Okay, so you just take a little bit of white, and then just here and there, drag some in. And I kind of turn my brush as I go. on the edges. And that's really all I'm going to put in for right now. It's a super, super, super easy, simple step. Okay. Real kind of subtle. Unless you want to have crashing waves, then you can make it less subtle. You know? And really what we're doing is we're doing everything in layers here. So we've got our we started with our sky, which is the farthest away in our view, our sight, and then where it meets the water, that water comes forward, right? And then so now we're kind of focusing on the closer water or that water, you know, uh, the details of it. And then we'll put our palm trees and things in front of that. So just like all of these layers end up giving you, you know, a very simple painting, but um, with a painting with some depth. So kind of pay attention to the layers as we're going. Yeah, so now we're going to paint our sand. That's the next one. And that's kind of a nice um, beige color. I'm going to use this bronze yellow. But any kind of a beigey color. Maybe mixed with a smidge of white again. So see, we have a side of white going with everything. And you're not going to need a lot of this beige color. We're just going to put a little bit of sand in our foreground. So that part where we put these waves on the upper part of our blue, the bottom part of our blue, we're actually going to put a little bit of sand here and there. I'm just going to take that beige color which is right here and just mix a little bit of white. So I'm going to get a, I don't know if you can see that. You can play around with it. When you get to a, a sandy, you know, that color that you like, just kind of paint little bits of a sandbar poking up through the water. Karen, which color did you mix with white? Sorry. Um, it was called bronze yellow, but it could be like any kind of a beige color. Here, let me put on my finger and show you. Can you see that beige? It's really hard to see. <laughs> I can do it in this one. Oh, can't do it in that one. 
see if I put it on here, if you can see. See that beige? So I need kind of a brownish beige like that, and then you add some white to it. And you don't have to even have it all super um, blended together, you know, just having this with a little bit of white like that. And then just using whatever you get from that and spreading it through, it's going to give that a little bit of dimension and depth too. Okay. And again, you can use your finger to just blend it in because you think about what you see when you see the sand meets the water. Sometimes you get that neat green color sand. You get different colors of blue here and there. Don't worry about what, it, what it's looking like. It doesn't have to look like sand at this point. We're just merging in some sandy colors, that's all. I didn't mean to put this big thing of white in here because I just accidentally dropped, you know, put my finger through it. But that's okay. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna just leave it as a reminder that mistakes happen. It kind of looks cool. All right. So once you get your sand in, then we get to paint our rock wall. And this is where the black painting starts where we get our um, silhouette starting to go in so bringing this up here and we just kind of finished putting in this this water the sand and now we're going to bring this wall that's halfway through if you see in the blue section here you take about the halfway section and pull it through we're just going to put some black rocks and those are basically just um, going to be lumpy black rocks as we get started. <laughs> but what I want to do is have you mix your black paint with a little bit of magenta. Um, just this little smidge. Or if you don't have magenta, maybe mix it with a little bit of purple or violet. Um, it's still going to look like black, but it's going to be special black. It's going to be better black. It's not going to be so flat. It's going to make our eyes happy. So it's mostly black. I'm going to show you my concoction here in a minute. So mostly black and about this much magenta. So I'm going to merge these two colors together. And that's just going to give me a yummy black. And then I'm going to go back to my straight brush to put my rock wall in. Whoops. My paintbrush just fell apart. So I'm going to bring in my rock wall, and again, I'm going to go halfway between here, and I'm just going to, or halfway-ish, sort of drag a straight-ish line. It doesn't have to be perfectly straight, because if you were to build a rock wall, it's certainly not going to be as straight as a ruler. This doesn't work that way. So you've got your straight line in there. That's the base of your rock wall. And then you just take that same brush, and just sort of make little bits of lumps here and there. And just think about each individual rock. 
Some might be kind of square, some might be kind of round, maybe flat. You don't have to worry about your shading just yet. We're just putting in the silhouette. I'll bring this closer for you guys to see. So again, there's a straight line. So I'm gonna build my rock wall all the way up to here. Because somebody built this rock wall made out of lava. I don't know who that was. Perhaps this was like an ancient fishing pond area. Maybe this rock wall was put there to, um, you know, trap the fish for easier fishing. Or maybe it was made in the modern day to make it into a lagoon so little kitties could go play in the water and be safe. I don't know, but this is man-made, so these rocks are kind of just stacked. All right. And then you can see I've got some um, transparency there. And I would like to just make it a little bit um, more opaque. So I'm going to just put another layer of black down on here just, um, just because I want to. So go ahead and just keep working on your rocks. If anybody has any questions, let me know. And by putting the second layer of black paint down, gosh, the lighting is just not that helpful, is it? Um, I don't think you can really tell in this painting so well, but by putting a second layer of black paint down, it actually gives you a little bit more depth and almost like texture to these rocks. Okay. Oh, perfect. Doesn't have to be super duper perfect at all. You got that nice flat shape. It can even look like Let's do some divination here. What do you see? I see a sea monster's back swimming in the water. You might see, um, what else do I see? I'm really stuck on the dinosaur, the, the seahorse or sea monster. What else could it be? It could be the teeth of a ginormous dinosaur with dinosaur bones. It could be anything. It happens to be a rock wall, but it's kind of fun to play around with shapes like that when you're just, you know, doing the silhouettes. So before your black paint dries completely, on this rock wall. We want to put in a little bit of highlight on our rock wall. So we're just going to use a little bit of white and a, and a smaller brush. And wherever you feel like you want to give a rock some definition, just give it a little highlight here and there. So let me show you what this finished form looks like. It's real basic, right? So we have our, our rock wall there, but every once in a while we've got some smidges of white here and there where the sun might um, shine or where it gets some sort of a reflection. So just putting a few white highlights on your rock wall is our next step. It's also a good time to kind of um, define each individual rock too. And you can tap white into there. It doesn't have to be a line that you are you painting in, you can just tap the white paint in if you'd like.
Oh, some white lines on your black wall. Some yin yang action going on there. So I didn't give a lot of thought to how the shapes were going or how the white was being painted onto the black so much because um, we don't need to worry about it with this kind of background. Does anybody need me to slow down? I should rephrase that. We should all slow down. We should just be slowing down in general, right? Like we should all just slow down. But if you need me to start painting slower or slow down this lesson, please let me know. <laughs> Now comes the real fun. Now we're going to get super bold and paint our trees. So sometimes this can be a mm, scary process because we're going to just like paint black over this whole painting that we just did. And it's going to be super, super beautiful, but it might feel a little bit scary. So let me just show you some of these trees again. <clears throat> so you notice We've got our background in here and we've got the rock wall. The next layer are these trees. After the trees, we're then going to put in these rocks because these trees are behind these rocks. See how we're just bringing layer after layer? So we just did this rock wall. Now we're bringing in the next closest things, which happen to be these trees. Okay, so we're going to have to make these trees go from down here where they're rooted into the earth and go up as high as we choose to make them go. I like to make some, at least one go off of the canvas because it just makes it look nice and big and beautiful. And then you might have a baby here. This might be the daddy tree, nice and big, the baby tree, and the mama tree or the teenager tree. Um, just give thought to how many trees do you want to put in. Here's the other one. And you notice with the trunks of these trees, <clears throat> the taller trees tend to have thicker trunks. All right? So that's what we're going to do is bring in those trees and it might feel a little bit scary putting that black right on top of um, what we've done, but just know this is how the tree grows. And again, we're using that black and the mix of whatever color you choose. So I'm sticking with my black and magenta. Alrighty, so I'm going to bring in, let's see here, let's start with this little guy. I'm copying, trying to copy the painting that, that we're sort of working from here. So he kind of comes up and he's not straight, he's bendy because he's on the ocean and it's windy, so he needs to be really flexible. He needs to be able to bend so that he can face the sun. He needs to be able to lean over when it's really super windy. So this is not a straight up and down um, tree like maybe a redwood tree would be. But there's absolutely no reason why you could not do the same technique and do a redwood tree. I just happen, happen to be doing an ocean and um, palm trees. So you could do any tree. Think about how pretty a cypress tree would look, like a Monterey cypress tree. Wouldn't that be pretty? But when I'm painting palm trees, I think of sturdy at the bottom and then nice and bendy and flexible at the top. Okay. Right here at the bottom, that's where we would sit with our fanny right here and our back right against that nice sturdy tree. Karen, can you show what kind of brush you're using for the tree? It's that straight, edge, straight edged. I should have told you that one. I'm sorry. So this is the same straight edge that I used when I put in the horizon line. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I just, I don't know, I like to do, especially, I guess it's the silhouette work, when you're doing anything that is a silhouette like this, that you want it to be um, kind of crisp lines, 
this is a really good type of brush um, to use or anything that's going to give you, you know, that straight line. Okay, thanks. Okay, yeah. Any other questions? No? Okay. So I'm going to continue on with my trees. So I'm going to do another one right here in the middle. He's going to end here, so... Fatter here. I'm just putting in the trunks for right now because I want to get the placement right. And then once I get the placement down, then I'm going to um, put on the leaves and the branches and all of that. This guy's going to come all the way up right here. He comes down. And then another bumpy curve. Okay, so that's kind of his shape. So now this is the big guy, so I'm going to make him a little bit fatter and really kind of start giving him his shape and form. But it takes um, a few dips of paint in the brush to get that to happen. What if you're painting and you're like, oh my gosh, that tree is just way too fat. I didn't want that tree to be so fat. Well, all that means is that the tree is just a little bit closer to you than you wanted it to be. It just means it's, it's closer. So it's all good. You know, you look at trees next time you're out taking a walk and the ones that are far away have skinnier looking branches. And the ones that are really close up have big bulky branches, big stumps, big trunks. All right, so I'm liking that. I like that placement. So now I'm going to keep using the same brush and I'm going to put in my branches. And I'm going to give them some kind of sway. So when I'm painting these palm trees, I, I don't, when you think about the sway, they're not straight, right? They're very bowed and flexible. So the, the trunks of our trees are flexible, but so are the branches. So they might come down like this. Kind of like grow up like hooks a little bit. That branch is going to go off the edge there for me. Move it back to that guy. And you may feel better using a smaller brush here, too. It's okay if you just, um, you know, it depends on the size of your branches. If you want to use a thinner brush, um, go for it. It's all good. Somebody, here's Angela. Hi, Angela. Hi. Hello. Hi, guys. We are painting our palm trees on the beach. All right, and then this guy. So you know what, before I put, um, oh, no, oh, oh, never mind, Get back. I'm just gonna keep making the skeleton of these palm trees. If anybody needs me to slow down or if you've got questions, just unmute yourself and let me know. And this one can come out and come across. So that act of that, this is our branch, right? It's like, whoo, and then the wind gets it, it bends and it goes across. The fact that we've made our branch cross our trunk gives us just one more layer of that perspective and that depth. 
for those little crossovers. Even though they might seem like such a little tiny thing, um, it makes our eye really super happy. It makes our brain happy. All right, so with these, I might start going to a smaller brush. Let me see, I don't know. Um, but what you want to do, think about how, if I can do this, um, think about a palm, like that's the, the branch, right? Usually the leaves then, they, they go off of it, kind of like a feather, not, not too different than a feather but they all kind of go in the same direction. They're all very bendy and flowy. So if you have, if you have a branch that's going like this, see how it's gonna flow? The, the leaves bend and follow the, uh, the branch. Does that make sense to everybody? All right. So now I'm just going to go ahead and put my leaves in. I have not changed my brush yet. I'm feeling like this one's okay. So this is a little bit more delicate work. So sometimes a smaller brush can be helpful. Crossing over that branch or that trunk. Okay. And with these silhouettes, it's nice to have the pink somewhat crisp and opaque. Did you get those nice crisp outlines? Next time you're outside, take a look at the trees and Pay attention to how they grow. Especially the palm trees are really cool. And so this is part of the process where you can get really um, just lost in your mind. So, um, you know, take advantage of that if you um, are feeling that, you know, that nice zen, creative feeling, just stay in that moment. I'm going to make these, um, there's this hook, this branch that's bending. I'm going to go ahead and follow the bend of that branch with these leaves. So that's how you get a bendy tree, a flowy tree. Okay. 
and it's the deal of same thing with your other trunks. Bring this up closer for you guys to see. When you get to a place here where one tree's leaves start to collide with another tree's leaves, you get to make the decision as to which tree is going to be in the front and which tree is going to be in the back. Because I want to, and I don't have to make that decision right now, but at some point I will when we're doing the highlights. Um, but this tree is a little bit closer if you look at the base. So I think I'm going to make his his leaves go in front of this other guy's. Later on, um, I might put a highlight on that. I'm not I'm not sure, but you're going to get to those moments at this stage where you have to sort of figure out, okay, what's what's in front and what's in back. This one's going to go um, behind this big one. So I'm just going to allow him to disappear into this other tree for now. Hope that makes sense to you guys. If not, we can talk about it. You just pipe up, okay? So this is the first layer of black. I can tell I'll, I'm going to need to go over with another layer. And it really depends on the quality of paints that you're using. If you're using a real heavy body, you could probably get through and, and do this silhouette with just um, one coat of paint. Um, hey, Angela. Oh, if you um, have uh, student grade paints, like what I'm using, you'll probably need to do two layers. Again, we've got trees and branches and leaves colliding here. So don't worry about it. Just let your trees grow. And don't worry if they're overlapping because that's what they do in nature.
If your paint is starting to get a little bit dry at this point, um, you can always add a little bit of water into your paint to thin it out. Because we've been using this black for a little bit now, it's starting to get a little bit gummy, potentially. Again, we've got this nice hooked branch and the leaves are going to just follow and bend along with it. They're super bendy like hula girls, right, Angela? Angela's a hula dancer. This is her. If she were a tree, this would be her. Bending and swaying. Let those leaves, let those palms, those fronds, let them sway and move like they like to move. All right, so I think this is my, my tree silhouette for right now. I'm going to um, go ahead and give it another kind of quick layer of black so that I have it pretty opaque looking. There are some um, places, I'll show you what I'm talking about here. Um, see how here, it's not super um, crisp like it is here. So I just wanna darken everything up, but um, staying nice and crisp within these lines. So I'm not an advocate of staying in the lines by any means. But um, somewhat staying in the lines at this stage is going to serve you well in this painting. <laughs> the second layer goes a lot faster because all we're doing is just following um, what we've already done. And again, this is that, um, that black with magenta. You may not be able to tell right off the bat by looking at it, but it's in there and it's yummy. I just darkened up this um, trunk here because see what's happening? You can really see the difference here with this trunk versus this trunk. You can almost see that horizon line through the trunk when you only have one layer of paint. And here we don't. So that's going to really make your trees pop out. Right, so you want to make sure your black lines are pretty, pretty crisp. Now, when I'm painting this black with magenta on top of this red, that makes our eye even more happy, which you might not know, but it's happening. In there, your eye is like, oh, neato. Because uh, magenta and red are our nice, yummy partners together. The fact that there's some magenta in here with that black makes it look even a little bit yummier. And at this stage, we're getting very close to the end of our painting. So don't feel any need to rush at all. I have no idea what time it is. We have 45 minutes. 
you guys have so much time, so just like really, really relax and enjoy this process. Okay, it's a nice time out. Because after we get our trees in completely, then we will put in um, a few more rocks to finish off our painting, and then that will pretty much be it. So make sure you're taking some good time with your trees. They don't grow overnight, you know. I have something I wanted to show you guys before I forget. Speaking of palm trees, when I was in Hawaii, I brought these back. They're um, just part of the palm tree, the husks. But um, I've dried them and flattened them, and so these are going to be canvases. So I could do like a little mini painting, just like what we're doing here. Uh, put the, those colors down, that little rainbow of um, sunset colors, and then put a nice little silhouette in front of that on this actual palm frond, frame it somehow. It's like a work of art, and it's and all by itself. I don't know if you can see all these little pieces of pulp, and it's really, really beautiful. So we can paint a palm tree on a palm tree. Going back to painting trees. It helps to keep a fairly mm, wet brush. You know, make sure you've got some good paint on there. Because when your brush starts to get a little bit dry, that's when you get that fuzzy um, kind of look that's not going to look so crisp. made the decision that I'm going to make this tree, this branch right here, I'm going to make it go in front of this um, trunk. I'm just stating that for <laughs> teaching purposes because at this stage you start to get like, okay, this tree is ahead of this tree or behind this tree. So. You make it happen on your canvas, however it happens. I wish I had some Hawaiian music going for you guys.
guys really get to decide how the trees grow. Sort of like um, pruning and cultivating with, uh, with paint instead of, uh, you know, dirt and pruning shears. You can guide the leaves with So you see how you start getting a lot of overlap with your leaves if you are doing palm trees. And you just let them overlap and mingle together. Good for now. How are you guys doing? Are you with me? Are you ahead of me? Are you waiting for me? <laughs> We're all good? Okay. It's all good. Different trees grow at different speeds. So our next step is we're going to put in our, um, or actually, wait a minute, we're going to put in our highlights. And if you, um, how many of you guys are doing coconuts or doing um, palm trees? Because we can put in some coconuts if you want. Everybody, well, how about everybody turn your canvas around now? Let's just see what everybody's got going on. Oh, trees. Ooh, ooh Joni, that's so good. So good, so good, so good, so good. Yay. Beautiful. Okay. We'll put some coconuts in. If you want to, you get to order coconuts or no coconuts. If you want coconuts, you take pretty much that same brush that you've been doing all of your black with, and you just pick a spot where you think they might stand out. So right here looks like a nice little spot. And you just sort of put this little teardrop shape right in there. And you can nestle them together. And I don't like doing, um, like when you're nestling things together, I don't like doing even numbers <laughs> of things. Like with flower, flower arranging, you know, they say keep odd numbers of, of things in there. So I'm going to do three coconuts on mine. And I think I'll put a coconut down here. Because you always see them on the ground, right? You got your coconuts. Um, before we move on, um, let's put a little bit of highlights on your on your um, on your branches and on your coconuts, just here and there. It's just really really subtle. So if you had a meal that you 
um, like say that this all this black here, pretend this is, uh, you know, your, your, your uh, pasta and you want to put a little bit of um, salt. You want to salt your pasta. You don't want to put tons, right? Otherwise, you're not going to be able to eat it. You just want a little bit of dusting of white. So I'm going to put a little white right here to differentiate this, these coconuts. To give just little specks of white here and there that kind of show the flow and direction of what your, what your trees have got going on here. And if you've got these parts that kind of cross over each other, sometimes it's nice to put a little, a little doobie out like that. Makes your eye happy again. So just spread out the love here and there. Put a little bit of, um, you know how palm trees have that kind of horizontal look. Nice kind of put some of that in your bigger tree if you've got one going on. It's, it's just a little bit of white, but it definitely makes a difference. I'm going to do a little bit of flow, a little bit of line here to my, my trees. All right, I kind of like that. Another, <clears throat> another time, another uh, example of just using your finger to blend things in. All right. So once we've got all of our white on our branches, we're done with our trees. And then we get to move on to our rocks in the foreground. So take another look at this original picture. And you see how we've got the rock wall here and our trees that are growing from that sandy area. And this particular picture has like a mama rock and a baby rock next to it. And then another couple of rocks over here. So this is your chance to um, you know, maybe put four, three, six, seven rocks in the foreground. But what one of them I would recommend putting right in front of one of your trees, your tree that's the closest maybe, um, and, and make sure that it kind of goes in front because that's going to give you, again, that, um, that layering, okay? So I'll, I'll show you how to do this. This is kind of what I'm working for. And we really go back to that rock wall where we just put in those black blobs. So again, I'm going back to this um, straight edged diagonal brush. And again, I'm using my, I'm almost out of my paint concoction of magenta and black, but that's okay. So I'm going to put one rock right here, the base, and I'm going to make him go up past this rock wall, the bottom of it, and then come down. Because again, that crossing over is giving us dimension. And then I put another little baby one here. Those guys are good. I might want to do some white on here to make sure that this um, coconut really looks like a coconut instead of a rock. If I don't do that, then I might just turn it into a rock. 
Another baby guy here. The trick to the rocks really is that they have somewhat of a flat horizontal bottom. Like weevils wobble, but they don't fall down, kind of thing, you know, stable bottom. And then the rest of it can be wobbly sides, pointy tops, you know, nice and rounded, but having that somewhat um, flat bottom helps you. And then same thing with these rocks. So put your second layer of black on to make sure that they're nice and dark. Put a little bit of texture in there. Get the nice shape that you want. great thing about um, doing lava rocks too is that you know they come in all different shapes and sizes so you can't really go wrong okay and then on top of those rocks you get to put your highlights just another little sprinkling of white on top of those Got some white love. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure what I'm doing with that coconut on the ground yet. Yeah. Pretty coconutty. That's pretty much it. If you guys can see that. So your rocks that you put in the foreground, the ones that you put down in front of your trees or around your trees, but in front of that rock wall, then you want to make sure that you um Get some highlights on those too, like I did here. Any questions, guys? Well, I'll just say I'm having a great time. I'm not painting, I was kind of drawing a little bit, but I'm having a fabulous time just watching you guys. I know, right? It's it's fun to watch people paint and just see kind of what you know what people are doing. It's very relaxing. Yeah. And I you are, it. you, you get this, right? So you just watching this now, you know, you're like, oh, I can just go do that when I want to. Oh my goodness. Look at that. <laughs> you know, is that Marky or Joey? That's me. That That's is me, Marky. So pretty. I love it. Oh, wow. I love how you can see the shallow water around those rocks in the base of the tree. Oh, Jody, She's got a wild woman beach going on. I like it. Like it, like it, like it. Hold, can you hold them up together, you guys? Because I like seeing your art side by side. Because you guys are like the superstar couple. Oh my gosh. Oh, that's so cute. Another one for the wall together, you guys. That looks like a little set. I love it. Love. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Lauren, I, I saw your, or, or, or Heather, your, your, um, you were holding yours up, right? Let's see that hand? purple. Oh, oh my God, I love it. And I love that. Is it purple? Purple and blue? 
Yeah. Love I'd it. Love if you did that, because it's like, yeah, you go, girl, you go rogue and don't do what we did, right? I just love it. Love. Can I see yours, Lauren? If you want to share. Oh, that's beautiful. Now look at what she's done. Like her, so you can, hold, you can see her, how she's raised her horizon line. She gives us um, a look at the beach from a, a bit farther out. So she might be on a house across the street from the beach, right? <clears throat> it's just a different perspective. I love it. Oh, love, love. Here, uh, Joni, Joni wanted to show you this too, if I can get it to. I can't tell. Uh, wait, did Joni paint Let's that? Let's see, where is it? Yeah. Joni? Can you see it? Yeah. That's so good. Look at the drip. Joni painted that. And yeah, that yeah. was, uh, I don't know. If you... From the class. Wow, she did a really, really, really great job. Is she super proud of that? I love it. That's hanging, that's out uh, over the turtle pond out front. Oh, yay. Hey, hit that with a coat of Verithane or spray spray stuff for outdoors, you know, and that will, it'll last out there for years. Super cool. Joni, I'm so proud of you. You're awesome. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. Okay, mock girls. What you got going? Oh, look at the little canvas. It's like a little pocket pop of beauty. Love it. Sasha, why do you look frustrated? Oh, no, that's beautiful. You guys are going to have a set, too. Look at your rock wall. Wait. Oh, oh postcards. Hold them all up. Oh, my gosh. And Sasha, keep yours up. Look at her rock wall. You guys, that is so beautiful. You're going to have to display those together. It's like three beautiful women, three beautiful palm trees, standing strong in the cool water. Yay. Thank you, Karen. Oh, you're so welcome. You guys rock. Thank you so much. You're so welcome. And Raquel and Anthony, can I see yours? Can you share? Oh, I love it. Very, you've got your style going. Oh, I love, you guys are very Dr. Susie tribal. And, and Raquel, the more you're painting, the more I am seeing your personal style really coming through with everything you paint. Like you're, that's really starting to come out. It's very cool. Yeah, awesome work guys. Well, thanks for being here today. We ended a little bit early, but that gives you a good half hour to do something good and nice for yourself. Maybe consciously yeah, don't I jump back on. <laughs> yeah, eat and have a good time, but stay, um, stay happy and do something that you really want to do. Too. I will. <laughs> Thank you, Karen. Oh, look at Hi, everybody. Thank you. Look at Angela's drawing. Yes, Angela. Woo! <laughs> Hello, everybody. Thanks, Karen. Mwah, you're welcome. Bye-bye.